Yeah, so, you know, basically, um, somebody who's grown up uh, a Catholic, you know, went through the whole process of baptism and communion and confession and everything like that. Uh, you know, doing that as a child, you know, now raising my own child, I, you know, I get a little confused to why we do that so young. Um, you know, to me, when I was reading, you know, just recently, I'm reading Luke and, uh, you know, Jesus is, you know, in the temple at 12 learning and um, things like that. I mean, that's kind of mind blowing to me because when I was 12 and I was learning about it, right. you know, it was very hard to retain and understand. And it still is. Right. Um, and for me and my wife, who she wants to believe and she has all these questions for me, it tends to be difficult because I feel like myself, I, I don't quite understand. You know, I read it and I have those questions that I'm just like, what is going on here? I know one thing I asked my mother was, um, how does Mary not know, right? She has these dreams um, that these angels come and they tell her, you know, this, you're going to be bearing child. Uh, you know, you're going to name him Jesus. And, you know, then all of a sudden, I, I can't remember exactly where in the scripture it was, but it, it does say, you know, she finds it to be crazy that he's acting like this. And I'm right. just like, to me, I, you know, as I'm thinking in 2021, how could that seem crazy to you? You yeah. knew, yeah. Uh, you know, he was Jesus Christ. You knew who he was, right? you know, or at least we're told. So mm -hmm. just, you know, little things like that we get into conversation on and it's fun. Okay. All so right. we're just looking kind of for answers there that are hard to answer. Okay. So, so when you're talking about baptism um, and the idea of learning young, um, so coming from a, a young place um, in, a, in a kid's life, obviously children need to be, or they don't necessarily need to be, obviously, but it's a good idea to shape them, uh, their mind, but not to manipulate them. So sometimes the church can be blamed for manipulating, just like anything else, um, children. But really to be shaped um, by the scriptures is one of the main things for the Jewish, uh, you know, the Hebrew people, was to shape their young people and to show them um, who this God was, that their history had shown them all throughout history that this was a God who loved them, who fought for them, who cared for them, who brought them into a land that they were in, and that even in the times of affliction and suppression from other nations and other people, that this was a God that they could depend on, they could trust in his faithfulness and those kinds of things. So that was early on for the Hebrew people. That, And then when you come into the church, um, you know, the church then, uh, after Acts, the book of Acts, and the church is, you know, kind of born out of that, and you have all these new churches popping up with people called Christians. They were first called Christians in Antioch. And so you have these new groups of uh, people called Christians. And this idea of being baptized was Jesus's idea. So in um, Matthew chapter 28, he says, Go into all the nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Spirit. And one of the reasons for all three, why he speaks of all three there, is because this is an identification of the God that you believe in. The God that you believe in exists as Father, Son, and Spirit. There is no other idea of God than that. Matter of fact, some people would say that Christians are polytheistic because they say we believe in three different gods. And the Christian would say, who is somewhat well-versed in the scriptures, they would say, no, there is one God, as according to Deuteronomy chapter 6 in the Shema, there is one God, but he exists as Father, Son, and Spirit. Now, even within that, there are different views on that, but this is what Jesus said. He says, go out and baptize them, submerse them in this idea, so physically take them underwater as a testimony that they are submerged or submerged in this idea and this thought that that the person of God exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But then he didn't stop there. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And one of the reasons for that is, if you look throughout the scriptures, is that if we learn how to live the way God taught us, then we will live a really good life. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, then the opposite is oftentimes true. So teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you, and I will be with you even to the end of the age. Now, the church over the years has manipulated some of those things. And for whatever reason, I can't take you back through the history, but the Catholic Church is convinced that somehow if a baby is born and it dies before it can, you know, say, hey, I want to follow Jesus or I want to be a part of the Catholic Church, 
then it could be lost forever to you know the pits of hell. So they baptize babies at an early age for that purpose. I have never seen anything in Scripture that tells us that to be true. Matter of fact, the opposite tends to be true. There's a text in Isaiah um, that kind of pushes towards the idea that there's this thing called an age of accountability, where a child is uh, kind of under God's grace until they get to a point where they can you know, make that decision. And nobody knows where that point is. Um, it depends on how the child has been trained. So some children may be at that age at six, and other children may be at that age, you know, not till they're 13 or 14. But it's always dependent on how much light we have and how much knowledge and understanding we have from God. And then God makes that judgment ultimately about where we're at and where our heart is. So I think from an early age, the church has always looked at this idea that winning the children in early age is going to help them in the future, not only to live a good life, but not to get caught up in all of the junk of the world. Mm -hmm. However, I don't know that we've done a very good job of that. And not to mention, no matter how much you try to teach your kids, they still seem to get caught up in the junk of the world. Right. So um, I think for the church to say there's this hard, fast rule that if we baptize them and we do this in the early years, then they're set. Um, that's not true because everybody has responsibility. Everybody has to figure that out. Um, so in that case, I think you go back to the parents. And so in Ephesians, Ephesians talks about as parents, we are to bring up our children uh, in the instruction of the Lord. Um, the, the Shema, Deuteronomy chapter 6, says that we're to train our children, or Proverbs tells us we're to train our children up in the way they should go. Deuteronomy chapter 6 says we're to teach our children when we're sitting down, for uh, when we're going to bed at night, when we're getting up, when we're sitting down, uh, when we're walking along the way. We're supposed to be talking to them about the person of God all the time mm -hmm. to help them to understand who he is. And you and I both know that um, when we sit down and we think about how even the culture molds us and sets us up, that if we are not teaching the truth about who God is, somebody else is going to teach a falsehood to our kids about who God is. So I think that's one of the reasons why the church as a whole has always impressed on young children um, trying to train them up uh, in the way they should go like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. And like for me, though, you know, again, with having a daughter, so she's two now, we have not baptized her yet. And mm -hmm. Haley and I have had discussions on this. And sometimes we feel, you know, not only, of course, it's our job to, you know, explain to her and educate her, but... Mm -hmm also for her to make her own decision, right. you know, and I, I don't know if that's the right way or wrong way, just because of what we've been told for so long that they should be baptized as infants, basically, right. you know, and um, I think we got somewhat lucky with the pandemic that we didn't do that, yeah. you know, because we yeah. probably would have fell into that. But as we get further along, and as she's starting to grow up and, right. you know, get older, I kind of feel like, you know what, I, I want to not prolong this, but I want to give her the opportunity to experience something like that because it's something I don't remember, something I did, you right. know, and something that I think could be a lot more meaningful. Yep. And maybe I wouldn't have got there when I was 12 years old. I don't think I would have. Right. You know, but right. I think at, you know, my age, maybe now, mm -hmm. um, you know, it would be a different experience for me. Uh, Thanks for watching this short clip. Make sure that you subscribe and click the bell so that you can get all the latest content.